Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. I am Ashok Hussain. I am a final level student or advanced level student of Chartered Accountancy under the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Bangladesh, which is ICAB, that has affiliation and follows the same study materials as the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, that is ICW. And my remaining introduction would be found in the description box of this video. So making these vid these videos for the students of ICAB, the students of ICW, the students of ICAI or the Chartered Accountancy Body of India, the Chartered Accountancy students of Pakistan, the ACC students or whoever would need guidelines on, on these topics, the hedgings and derivatives, including the futures, forwards, options. Of course, we're talking about the commodity futures, the commodity options, the currency futures and the currency options, the index futures and the money market hedging. We would be discussing all of these in detail and the lectures would be in English. Yes, in some places I would provide additional explanation in Bengali if needed. But those who are English speakers, please don't worry about those parts as those parts would already be spoken about in English before I talk in Bengali if needed. So the mostly the lectures would be in English. So that's it. Let's start. In this video we'll talk about the commodity futures and then the, the commodity forwards. First of all, we'll talk about the futures and then the forwards. So, we can see the definition first that the future is a standardized contract to buy or sell a specific amount of commodity, currency or a financial instrument at a particular price on a stipulated future date. So basically, future is a contract. Future is a contract which can be made to buy or to sell and to buy or sell what to buy or sell any commodity that can be any fruit any food anything that can be any currency financial uh, instrument at a particular price that means uh, there has to be a fixed price on a stipulated future date, the fixed price of not today, but of a future date. Ask it date now. Future money will be sure that connect a data price. We're going to understand this, the whole future, the commodity future thing by the following example, which is we are talking about 1st January of any year. Just suppose 1st January of any year. On 1st January, the price, that means the spot price. So the what is the spot price? The spot price is the current price. The price of today is the spot price. On 1st January, the price of a consignment of cocoa beans, cocoa beans is our product, is $1,000 in the cocoa market. So you go to the local market, and you found on 1st January that the current spot price of cocoa beans is $1,000. Okay. And then you want to buy a consignment of cocoa beans on 31st March on this cocoa market, but the price is uncertain. So just after three months, on 31st March, just at the end of the third month, at the end of March, you would like to buy some cocoa beans. But today we have on 1st January, we have a price of $1,000. But as the market is uncertain, you're not sure what's going to be the price after three months. If the price is too high for you, then you would not be able to buy if you don't have that amount of money. So you need, you need to plan about that. How can you plan about that? Well, let's move to point number C. You buy separately on a futures market a three-month cocoa futures contract at dollars one thousand one hundred that expires on thirty-first March. 
This means you are committing to buy a consignment of cocoa beans, not at today's spot price, but at the future's price of 1100 which represents what the future market thinks the spot price will be on 31st March. Let us move to Excel now. There are two kind of markets here we are talking about. What happened? First of all, the cocoa local market. This is just a local market, right? This is the market from where you are buying the commodity. And then we have Then we have the future contract market for cocoa. This is a, a market that sells contracts, not the actual product. A market is the actual product to sell. This is future contract sell. This is the market that sells the contracts for the product cocoa, but they would not give you the product. Here you can directly buy the product, and this is a market of contract. Just a contract written on a paper, a formal standardized contract. That will, that will provide you a contract to buy or sell cocoa at a future date. That date could be one month later, that date could be three months later, or six months later. So this is a contract market for cocoa and this is actual goods market. So what have we got so far from the points we have read in the points A, B and C? We have got that on the date 1st January the price of cocoa in the market is $1,000 as we saw in point number A that on 1st January the price the spot price of a consignment of cocoa beans is $1,000 in the cocoa market and from point B we saw that you want to buy a consignment of cocoa beans on 31st March on this cocoa market, but the price is uncertain. So you want to buy three months later, not today. You don't want to buy the cocoa today at $1,000. You, you don't want to do that. You want to buy three months later on 31st March. And from C, we found, I'm reading again, that you buy separately on a futures market a three-month cocoa futures contract at 1100 that expires on 31st March. This means you're committing to buy a consignment of cocoa beans not at today's spot price but at the future price of 1100 which represents what the futures market thinks the spot price will be on 31st March. What, what, what this means is, let me go back to the Excel sheet. The people of this market, the contract market, they're assuming, they're assuming that on, on 31st March, the price of cocoa would be $1,100. They're assuming that because we are sitting on 1st January, so they do not know the actual price of 31st March. They can only assume and analyze. And they are assuming that on 31st March, the price of cocoa would be 1,100. So if you want to buy on 1st Jan, a contract to buy cocoa on 31st March, they are setting the price of their contract as 1100. So today if you buy a contract to buy or sell cocoa beans on 31st March, you need to buy that contract for what? For 1100. You're buying on which date? On 1st January. What does that contract do? That contract gives you a right and also an obligation because you must exercise that contract because the futures these are mandatory contracts if you if you sign the contract if you buy the contract you must exercise it so this contract if you buy it today will give you a right and obligation to buy 
or sell cocoa on 31st March. That is the job of this contract. Now let's go, go back to the PDF sheet again. We have drawn all the pictures of 1st January. Now the situation comes at 31st March. What happens on 31st March? You buy the consignment of cocoa beans on 31st March from the cocoa market while the spot price on that date is 1200. So on 31st March, we have a situation that the price of cocoa beans have gone to 1200 not 1100 the actual price on 31st march was 1200 and i need to buy the beans i need to buy the cocoa so i went to the local market because this is only a contract market so i cannot buy actual cocoa from this contract market to buy the actual product i went to the cocoa local market and bought it for $1,200 because I need the cocoa consignment on 31st March. Now what happens? Point number B, under the futures contract you are still committed to buying the consignment at $1,100 on 31st March. But that will mean that you have two consignments of cocoa beans rather than just the one you need. You therefore sell on 31st March the futures contract you bought on 1st January to eliminate this additional commitment. Assuming that the futures contract on at 31st March is now priced at 1200 as this is the same as the spot price on 31st March, you will sell the futures contract for 1200 Now what happens is, as this market is influenced by this market, the contract market is always influenced by the actual goods market. So as the price of the actual good on 31st March has moved to $1,200, the price of this futures contract would also move to $1,200. Now I have already got the contract on 1st January that uh, on 31st March, I said I have a right and obligation I have a right and obligation. So I will buy the futures contract on 31st March for how much? For 1100 This is my right. So I'm going to buy this for 1100 And as the price in the contract market on that date is 1200 I'm going to sell it for 1200 So the loss I incurred here is somewhat compensated by the gain I made here. Let's go back to the PDF. Point number C, because you have sold the contract for more than the purchase price, you have made a gain on the futures contract of 1200 less 1100 that is a dollar of 100 So, as I bought the contract on 1st January, I had a right to buy the futures contract for how much? For $1,100. And I sold it for $1,200, which was the spot price on that day. So I made a gain in the market of $100. This can be set against the purchase you made in the cocoa market. So my net cost, my net cost was as in the cocoa market. In the cocoa market, I had to buy the cocoa for $1,200. And I made a gain in this contract market of $100. I've already shown you how I made that gain. So my net cost would be $1,200 less, 1000, uh, less $100, that is $1,100, which was my actual plan. At the start of 1st January, I was planning that I don't really need, want to spend more than $1,100. So I've actually, uh, I've actually reduced that risks uh, of the price moving. The price actually moved to 1,200, which was more than the assumption. But as I had the future contract, I did not really need to face the effects of that price hike. I could, I could keep my net cost at 1,100. This is the, the effect of having the futures contract, and this is how, how hedging is done. This is the role of derivatives.
in reducing the risk of a business. So overall, the picture here, they have shown it, and we already uh, know the picture from our Excel sheet, so I'm not going to I'm not going to elaborate this one as I've already shown that here. So as you can see that the actual price increased by 200. I made a gain of 100, so I still had to face a price hike of 100. And this is related to hedging efficiency, which we'll discuss in the next classes. But I'm just... Uh, telling you the name of the term that's hedge efficiency which we're going to discuss it in the next class so what you have seen this this is the role of these derivatives these derivatives uh, play an important role in these kind of markets to reduce the risk of a businessman so this would conclude today's lecture but of course we will continue this topic in the next lectures and eventually cover the whole scope of these the whole thing, hedging derivatives, including futures, forwards, options, and money market hedging, we'll do all of these with mathematical examples. So if you like the video, consider subscribing my channel. And also, in the description, you'd find the link of my Facebook group, the Facebook page. So please, follow those networks and, and share the video. That's very important. Thank you very much. See you soon.